Wow, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. This is this is something, you know, because I remember it's, they get you young, you know. I can remember being very young in school, and the teacher says, "These are the py pyramids." Imagine they show all these little, all these little workers, you know, mm -hmm. they're all like chiseling away, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. Well, in point of clarification, the copper tools, um, I'm sure, were effective in cutting limestone, which is extremely um, soft compared to granite. Mm -hmm. granite. But if you look on the what they call the Mohs scale of, of the hardness of materials, copper even hardened copper, which the Egyptologists say they developed some method um, to harden it by tempering it or whatever, and even I.E. Edwards, who I just quoted, says in his book that they haven't found any evidence of how that could have been done. Mm -hmm. He said that. Uh -huh. But in any case, they say that maybe they hardened it and made it a little bit harder, and so therefore, you know, um, then, they, then they could do better work with it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that on the most scale, uh, copper, hardened mm -hmm. or otherwise, is about as half as hard as mm -hmm. granite, so it made some logical yeah. sense that they could do precision, uh, the type of work that you will see continuing here. And so uh, as we continue in the, in the, um, the roll-on, you'll see some of the precision work that we're talking about. Okay, now we're beginning to get into the issue of the, of the granite, and you'll see the arrow is pointing to what they call a blend radius between the, the perpendicular sides. Now, <coughs> though we'll give some much better examples than that, but <coughs> the mere fact that it has been is there's a contour there in between the two angles. Here is a much better example of that. And you can see the arc, the way the, the yes. piece is, is arced yes. over. Yes. Well, Mr. Dunn took some uh, calibration devices to Egypt. This is a, a better angle of that same um, piece um, that weighs a number of tons, actually, this piece of granite. It's pink granite. Um, and notice that the contour is in the blend radius there in the corners, uh -huh. and, then, and then the radiuses of the curve itself are absolutely uniformly, precisely um, Cut. parallel yeah. and, 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 and contoured in, uh, in basically three axes, X, Y, and Z axes. And um, his conclusion was that in no way could have been done by hand with copper chisels. And here's, here's, a better, here's a better contour. I, I, I photographed that photograph. And I'm here to tell you that those curves are absolutely uniform, just like they had some kind of a router or something uh -huh. that went right through it and cut it. And the uniformity is, the, is a function of the device used, not that it was done by hand. Hand work can't be done like that. It's too irregular and too imperfect to create such uniform um, parallel surfaces. Here's some more of the blocks, very large blocks. These are also at Giza. And now we're going to go to another site to show more of the evidence of machining. And this will be uh, a site with the, that's about 10 kilometers or so south of, of Giza, where the pyramids are. And this is the site of Abu Sir. For, uh, and there are three of the pyramids that are at this area, circa 2490 BC. That's the hypothetical time that they believe all this took place. However, the revisionist view is that actually the temples associated with these pyramids were there l long in advance of when they were utilized by the pharaohs in perhaps the fifth dynasty. Now, is this another anti-evolutionary thing, or are these actually Th younger? This is, this is the beginning of a series of photographs, here you see some more, that show absolute evidence of boring. Uh -huh. Now. The, the conventional view is that they did have drills. The problem, though, is that they're, they've never found any drills. Well, there's no evidence <laughs> of drills in any So of obviously these what we're showing is that they did have evidence of drills, but they never found any. Really, all they ever found were copper chisels and some, uh, some kind of like hammer devices. There, yes. But that's a rather large one. But the most impressive holes are, are, are right here in this shot, and some close-ups we have to show the scoring on the inside of the holes at the radius. Here's even more. Those, those holes are about two or three inches in diameter, and they're absolutely perfect holes. Uh -huh. That material there was ba basalt. Uh -huh. This is just, the, and here's another one. Uh -huh. Wow. This is really, you had a good cameraman. This is very good contrast here to see the different mm -hmm. styles those, of. Yeah, now here, here we have an example of this. 
as you can see, that's a perfect hole, uh -huh. and you can see little lines on the inside that are that are due to the scoring of the bill, of the drill bit. Well, how do Egyptologists of the conventional Orthodox view explain these holes if you have no now, evidence of the of the tool? You can see the scoring yes, on the inside. Yes, I see the scoring. Right, of the rotation, um, and actually, an unusual thing about the boring device that they used, that's and that material there you see is is basalt. It's approximately wow. the same hardness as granite. Um, the, the types of drills that they used were actually hollow drills. They were actually tube drills, which was even more remarkable, presuming that they used copper drills, because they would be seemingly even weaker than if, if the drill was a conventional drill, as someone imagines a drill in their mind. These drills were hollow, so that it left a cylinder that had to be broken off after the drill went down. Do we use diamond them. bits to do that now? I mean, yeah. Is it well, we, we, steel? we would use um, basically something that would be called silicon carbide or perhaps with diamond tips on on the drills to cut through that type of hardness wow. of material yes and of course you can imagine well they would they must have had the technology to a, to affix what are uh, these precious precious stones to the the material of the copper if the drills were made out of copper uh -huh. the whole thing is illogical now here's a copper lid this has been oh, addressed. What lid? A copper lid, basically. A coffin. A co your coffin lid. Yeah, yeah. Copper lid. Sarcophagus. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Here's a here's a shot of the facing stones that were are the type of thing that are now missing from the three great pyramids, but this shows you what they would have looked like if they were still there. They had been removed. Because they were too valuable. The yeah, stone? they removed them to use them as a building material. They were marble rather than granite. Is that right? Not quite marble, but close to it. Mm. Now, how did they cut those stones right there? Is, is that is that uh, sandstone? Well, there's no telling. Those are made out of red granite. Jeez. It's hard to tell how they did it. And we have no, just those little copper tools I, I, and a hundred little slaves. Well, <laughs> I might say, though, that there was a man, there was a man in 1837 yeah. named J.R. Hill who found a piece of iron embedded in the Great Pyramid and sent it to the Cairo Museum, and it still exists there. It's the only piece of iron that was ever found that was absolutely irrefutably shown to be a part of the um, the the site where it was found. So they the, so they couldn't presume it was placed there later uh -huh. after the ability to to uh, make iron was developed. But actually, um, where Mr. Hill found it in 1837, it was in placed between some some of the blocks. I, I believe in the in somewhere in the mm -hmm. Great Pyramid. And therefore, it must have been there when the pyramid was constructed. Then they didn't refute that. However, they don't make a big deal about it because, of course, the the primary classic pyramid age, which was in the old kingdom mm -hmm. of the dynastic period, which was divided into an old kingdom and a new kingdom. Mm -hmm. The old kingdom uh, ended around the fifth dynasty, and that's around, you know, 24, 23, 2400 BC. Now, they ostensibly didn't have the ability to um, to smelt iron mm -hmm. or create iron. Mm -hmm. So when Mr. Hill found the piece of iron, they took it and they cataloged it and then they just set it aside and forgot about it until recently some people went there and said, hey, listen, we know that they found it. Uh, a very renowned um, Egyptologist um, noted it in one of his books and that's how they had evidence for it and so they went there to see it for themselves and it does exist but they don't claim it, in, it has any place in history because of course it doesn't fit yeah. into history so what I'm saying is that the find shows that obviously they must have had some kind of materials mm -hmm. harder than copper mm -hmm. and that at least shows that in yeah. one instance it shows they must have had something harder namely right. iron but they didn't. They haven't found really anything other than that. So it's still, it's an anomaly. So Mr. Dunn hypothesizes, uh, with a great, great body of evidence, much greater than we've even referred to here. I mean, it goes on and on. We don't have time to discuss it. And it's over and above simply drilling techniques or the cutting and placing of of of, of precision placed um, blocks that weigh 70 tons in the Great Pyramid. It go or the or these contoured pieces. It goes on beyond that too. Um, but in any case. The point is that Mr. Dunn makes a case for this in the sense that you can very clearly see evidence of, of some kind of machining in various ways, not only drilling, sawing, the sawing of mm -hmm. great pieces of, of, um, of granite, mm -hmm. where in the book he shows that um, the, the grooves in the granite 
were left from the device uh, that was used to saw the ends of certain things. Mm -hmm. And it must have been uh, a machine that worked at high speed because if you're going at a slow pace yeah. by hand, you would see that, oh, we're getting a little bit off, let's stop. Mm -hmm. But anybody who has the experience of like a, a, a skill saw or whatever, that kind of analogy, you know that when you start to go off, you miss it quite mm -hmm. a bit. And you have to come back because the blade is rotating so fast. Mm -hmm. And so it's difficult to get it back online. And to avoid going further, you, you almost can't because of the momentum of the machine. And that's the kind of evidence he's found to show that it wasn't done by hand work. It must have been done by some kind of a, of a, mach of a machine where in the, the cutting process was being done rapidly, much more rapidly than could, have, could possibly have been by, done by hand. Now another problem is the pressures involved. Mm -hmm. When you're doing, working on, on these materials like granite and diorite and, and basalt, the pressures that would have been involved to drill holes that are that big around would be extremely large in terms of pressures to, put, to bear down. Mm -hmm. How could a man, a single man, bear many, many, I mean, God knows how many thousands of, of pounds per square inch to get it to go through there. See, these are, these are the anomalies that we're talking mm. about. Okay, now we're going to go on to our last piece of film, I believe, and that is Abu Ghraib. And this is a very remarkable place, one of the most remarkable, because you're going to see also evidence of the tube drill phenomenon. And right before you there, right there in the middle of the screen, is uh, an altar, as they call it, this is an example of the same kind of material in a pavement mm -hmm. or a podium that, is, um, that w this whole area was paved with. Now it's broken off. You can see the podium around it. Yeah. That whole area apparently was paved with that same material at one time. And that material is basically solid crystal alabaster. It's about as hard as quartz, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this circle that you'll see right here is, shows the irrefutable evidence of how they contoured this portion of this altar. Um, you will see us freeze frame this in a second. And there again, it was evidence that they had this kind of hollow drill technology yes. that drilled down in the corner mm -hmm. and left these circles there and to the left, mm -hmm. and then to the left again. You'll see the radius of the cutting device that was used. So wow. they drilled it down like in successive places to remove the material. And there you can very clearly see it. That was not left by a copper chisel. Yeah, but I have a question. You know, if you drill down like this, you mm -hmm. still have to cut across to get that, you know, I mean, you can't just... They did it successively. You see? You see the radius next to each... See, there's another one next to the other one on the right. Yeah. See what they did? They went like... They did one, then they moved over the approximate radius, yeah. and then did our diameter, and then they did another one, and then they did another one. That's the way they did it. Then they had some method of polishing... See, there's another... They had to have some method there? of breaking it off at the bottom. You see there? There's another... Uh, uh, scarring. We're cutting it, Bob. Yeah. Because even though you make all those little can cuts, now we've got about three minutes here to go. How much longer we got on the tape here? Um, just uh, probably a couple more minutes. Okay, because we have a sample of that. Yeah, we're going to show a we'll sample show a of sample that material. Of that I brought material it back. That he got mm -hmm. at the site. And the whole, like, imagine a whole, how large an area would you say was made out of this, uh, this crystal? Well, this... Um, Originally? This altar is about four feet high and about, oh, I don't know, maybe nine, ti nine or ten feet in diameter. It's solid, 100% solid, mm -hmm. as you can see. Uh, wow. They say that it's alabaster. In any case, it's some kind of solid crystal, extremely hard. Mm -hmm. I would say even harder than granite, which is almost entirely quartz. But th it's remarkable that they got this material, and then they used the same material as a pavement upon which to place this this, oh this goodness. altar. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so, so there again, they had extremely hard material to deal with. What are they quarry this stuff? What they, uh, uh, there, I don't know. I know. I've never heard any um, references to where, where was the quarry? quarry was. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're now only down to one minute, so we should probably fade from the roll on now to show we can show the stone that we actually have. Yeah, we have a piece of this. So, Tim, if we come here, here is the stone. This they actually had that something would be four feet. See all there the little go. the little veins in it, mm -hmm. and that it would be a larger. That's a small piece that had fallen off was lying on the ground, and we're going to conclude with imagine how they were able to cut that with devices that we still don't understand how they do it. And let's conclude the show with, that's why we call this the anomalies. There are situations in these temples and their construction which are so unique and so different.
that we still don't know how, from the evidence that we have now in archaeology, how they did these things and how they did them is a mystery. And we would appreciate it if the historians, instead of not glossing over the facts, would meet these facts head on so we could have a greater understanding of the kind of human accomplishment and achievement that was truly done in ancient times. And Randy, I got to really thank you for coming on the show with this amazing video that you did and that amazing journey you made to Lebanon and to Egypt. And really thank, thank you very much. Uh, it was really a me. great adventure. And mm -hmm. stay tuned. We'll have more adventure with Randy to come. I'm sure he'll be off on another adventure soon. That's right. Thank you.